It's dangerous to run around here, boys. Grandpa, hurry! Hurry Grandpa, up! Grandpa, you're too slow! Oh, my God. 
Another story. Ah, uh, yes, of course. You've been waiting a long time for this, so how about a special one? This story is very strange and very nasty, but somewhat nostalgic. Do you think you can be a good girl and listen all the way to the end? Is it a scary story? It might be. But it's also a very uh, important story. If you don't want to hear it, I can tell you a different story. No, I want to hear it. This way, I won't be scared. Will you turn on the TV then? Leave the sound down, my darling. Now, listen, this is important. At times, we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. Could you wait just a little longer? This won't take long. Sorry to keep you waiting. It will start soon. It's about time to get started. Interdependency, and they both know it. Yeah, I know. He does terrible things to Tom. Nasty, even sadistic things. But that's fine, as long as that's what Tom wants. Think of it. His actions. He's always asking for it. It's his partner's job. 
to fulfill that need, and Jerry knows that. Proof? Well, in the Tom and Jerry show, they live with each other. Hello? Hello? I believe the Bureau still can't get me a satellite phone. These puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. Well, I'll be a happy camper. Even if it ends up being a waste of time, at the very least it'll get me out of the cramped city for a while. Right, Zack? The perpetrator from the last case really was something. Who'd have thought there'd be razors laced into your nails? Crazy. Just crazy. Well, at least I now have a scar to show off. See this? I got this when I arrested the Catwoman wannabe. Women. They're crazy. Don't you agree, Zach? Zack, there goes the civilized world. <laughs> Looks like we're being welcomed. Zack, I'll let you handle the meet and greet. crazy situations, but that one, that one takes the cake. It's the first time I've been attacked so directly. Zack, can you give me a logical explanation about what that was? Never mind, don't answer. Life is fun because of the mysteries. 
Right, Zack? Definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zach? My coffee warned me about it. Yesterday morning, the milk I poured in my coffee made a sign. It said, Tomorrow you'll arrive in a place that will change your fate. Now you were very late. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. FBI Special Agent, Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Agent York? Good, that's good. Are you the sheriff? Uh, no, I'm Deputy Sheriff Emily Wyatt. George, he's the sheriff. He went looking for you, actually. He should be back soon. I see. If you don't mind me asking, did you walk all the way here? My car broke down, that's all. She's easy on the eyes. Definitely worth a trip to the primitive world. By the way, don't mention anything about what happened back there. She'll think you're a psycho. Don't want that, do we, Zack? Welcome to Greenvale. I'm the sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Could you tell me why the FBI is so interested in a small-town homicide? Let's just say it's a personal interest in killers of young women. I'm always looking for new sample cases to help me with my profile. Both our superiors have cleared this with each other. You can remain in command. You don't have a problem with this, do you? No. No problem. Just want to set things straight. Our small town has its share of problems. I'm the one fixing them one by one, and maintaining peace and order. You can have your profiling sample, but I need you to understand that. <clears throat> of course. Of course. By the way, George, I had a little accident with my car. Could you send someone to take care of it? Oh, and my clothes and luggage are still inside. All right. Don't worry. I'll get my assistant, Thomas, to take care of it. Do you need anything else? Thanks. That'll be all. Well then, I think I'll rest up first at the hotel. 
Then I'll join you on your investigation. Don't know how to say that. But, uh, we really don't need your help. Unlike some of your corrupt city police officers, I play it by the book. I hope you'll come to appreciate that, Agent Morgan. And we'll handle the investigation. You just think of this as a vacation. Take it easy. Enjoy the nature here. You don't have to be a tree worshiper to appreciate the wildlife here. <laughs> Zach, let's reassess the situation. There are no cavemen here. We're as far forward as the Middle Ages. And we've just met the king. Previously, during the investigation, these puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. Welcome to Greenville. I'm the sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zach? My coffee warned me about it. been using that one for a long time. Why didn't you get it repaired? This TV is important to you, right? It's got some memories attached to it, sure. I used to watch movies on this thing with your grandma all the time. Grandma liked movies? Of course she did. Everyone loves movies, right? I love movies, too. I've never been to a movie theater, though. York! York! Who are you?
Zack, the symbolism in my dreams continues to intensify. A forest of red trees. A carpet with red leaves. A strange doll. And twin angels. But that child is what bothers me the most. I swear I've seen him before. I just can't remember where. Well, it'll probably come back to me eventually. For now, we need coffee. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Your breakfast is ready for you. Thank you, Mrs... Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then, thank you, Polly. I'm starving. Is everything all right, Mr. Morgan? Yes, it's delicious, Polly. My compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. What's that? The salt's in that white shaker there. Thank you. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh, no. No one else. My husband and I used to run this place, but... He's in heaven now. You've been working here alone since then. Must be hard by yourself. Oh my. We're all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. Well, yes, I suppose. I could just live on my pension. But I have to admit, running a hotel is kind of like a hobby of mine. That's nice. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. Oh my, Mr. Morgan, you're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. Polly, I can hardly hear you from all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> now tell me, that wound on your face, what happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my, well, there's no need to be the tough guy here. I want you to be able to relax here. I've prepared a special room for you. A famous rock star once stayed in the same room, you know. Really? I feel honored. If you need anything, anything at all, just let me know. I'll help you out in any way I can. Zack, the lady is offering to help. Do you want to ask her about the town? Say, Polly, what can you tell me about this town? Well, let me see. You might know this already, but the town is called Greenvale. It rains here quite often, but it's a nice place, surrounded with nature. It was a big and prospering lumber town until not so long ago. We used to have a population of over 6,000 people. Less than a tenth of them left now. This hotel was built back then. We saw plenty of guests in those days. That's why this place is so big for such a small community. I have so many fond memories from back then. I suppose the clock on the community center is quite famous too. The clock? Oh yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night to let the whole town know the time. You'll hear it many times during your stay. It's a beautiful sound. And you'll love it too, I think. I look forward to hearing it then. Anything else you'd like to know about? Yes, actually, Polly. Could you tell me about the shops around here? Shops? Well, there aren't many. It is a small town, after all. You can do most of your shopping at the Milk Barn convenience store. 
The couple who run it are a unique pair. I'm sure you'll get to like them. The A&G Diner is a great place to eat. They might be open even if my kitchen is closed. If you want to go to a bar, there are two. The Galaxy of Terror and the Sweary 65. I don't care much for either of them. Bars are for the younger folk. We also have a gas stand, of course, the art gallery, and even a gunsmith. You should be able to find what you need. Thank you, Polly. Well, Mr. Morgan, I'd better start cleaning up. You just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I have to warn you, though. I am very particular about my coffee. The very best you have, please. I understand. I'll be right back with it. See that, Zach? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In the coffee. I knew I could count on it. it. Never fails. Now then, let's get going. Police car. So we have King George to thank for preparing a car for me. A pleasant surprise, eh, Zach? Let's take it for a spin. I have to tell you, Zach, this place simply amazes me. The keys were left on the front hood, and nobody stole the car. Values. This town has what the country needs. Values. Let's head over to the Sheriff's Department. That's one fine building for such a small town. The exterior woodwork is spectacular. Don't you agree, Zach? Pleasure to meet you, Agent Morgan. We've been expecting you. I'm Thomas McLean, the Sheriff's Assistant. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please just call me York. It's what everyone else calls me. Very well then, Agent Agent York. I believe I owe you a thank you for retrieving my belongings from my car. Thanks. Oh, no, no. Just doing my job. I just... I want to help do everything I can to help the investigation. I just can't believe Anna was murdered. She was such a bright and lovely girl. Did you know her well? Well, no, not really. But it's a very small town. I'm sorry. It's just that this is the first really big case I've ever seen. I understand. Just try to relax. Can I have a look at Anna's file now? Y yes, of course. The sheriff told me to let you through to the meeting room, but... I've lost the key to the cabinet where the files are. Why don't you take a look around while I go look for it? Okay. Let me know when things are ready. Zach, Thomas appears to be the kind and sensitive type, totally at odds with the monarch. 
Almost a good setting for a cartoon. You found the key. That's the right one? Yes, a southern flying squirrel. Thank you so much. I'll bring the files right in, so please go to the meeting room. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. Well, Zach, we just got here and we've cracked a big case already. The victim's name was Anna Graham. Age 18, she just recently graduated from high school this year. Her dream was to move out to the city and become a model. But for the time being, she was working in the A&G diner here in town. She lived with her mother, Sally. Anna's father died in an accident in the lumber mill when she was a child. Her mother is unemployed and lives on the insurance money from her husband's accident. After all, it's a small town with a low cost of living. Financially, they seem to get by fine, and they led normal lives. A normal life is exactly what a curious teenager doesn't want. It's all starting to make sense, Zach. City folk, huh? No. No, I take that back. All of them can't be as bad as him. And some should have better manners. Huh. This is a good biscuit. I've never tasted a biscuit this delicious. Where in town can I get these? Well, actually... I... Well... I... I baked them myself. Mm, that's amazing. What are you doing in law enforcement? I'm very particular about biscuits, I'll have you know. The balance of milk and butter you've achieved here? Oh, my. Agent Morgan, the autopsy's ready. You are welcome to accompany me to the Greenvale General Hospital. Emily, you come too. Thomas, stay here and tidy up these files. Y yes sir! We're going to use the car outside. Let's get going. You might think this is just a small town police investigation, but our inspections are thorough and solid. I'm hoping you won't slow us down. The Greenvale General Hospital is down the road by the lake. It's too far to walk. Come on, get in the car. If I'm riding in a car, George, I prefer to be the driver. Can you provide a car for me? What are you talking about? You don't even know how to get there. Which is another good reason for me to drive, George. I need to learn my way around town. Oh, man. Very well. Then I'll ride with you. I want to keep an eye on you. Fair enough. Just one thing, Agent Morgan. Your involvement in this case is limited. That means you don't have to learn your way around town. George, we'd better get moving. The hospital closes at 2100. Agent Morgan, get us there quickly, but drive within the speed limit. Just because you have a badge doesn't mean you can drive like a maniac. George, what are you, his mother? We just need to get the autopsy results. Agent York isn't accustomed to the town yet. Give him a little slack. Hmm. Well then, Agent York, let's get going. Sure, sounds good. It's a pretty big hospital. I guess they wanted to be ready for uh, town-wide food poisoning? No, no. It's another leftover from the town's prosperous slumber days. Hard to imagine now, uh -huh. though, isn't it? My mother always talked about how energetic this town used to be. Almost like a gold rush, she used to say. Impressive. But the hotter the fever, the faster it cools. And so now there's hardly anyone left to use this place. It pains me to watch my hometown lose so many citizens. Beyond your understanding, I'm sure. 
Yes, I'm sorry to say that it is. Indeed. And that's why this case is our problem. There really isn't any need for you to get too involved. Hello, Sheriff. Hi there, Fiona. We're here to see Usha. Do you know where he is? I think Dr. Johnson is in the computer room. A computer room? In a hospital? <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. FBI agent. The computer room is where our employees share a computer. Very nice to meet you, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. But how did you know I was FBI? <laughs> Easy. None of the police in this town wear cologne. Besides, that scar on your face is the biggest rumor in town. Rumors get exaggerated as they spread, even in the countryside. What's that you're reading, if I may ask? You haven't heard of this yet? It's a recent bestseller mystery. It's set in the U.S., a small traditional North American town close to the Canadian border. A peaceful, traditional place. However, that peaceful town is shattered by a terrible crime. The murder of a local girl. And that incident causes grief and sadness to everyone in town. But everyone feels the seditious, heinous, evil still lurking, alive. Yes, much like the situation right now here in Greenvale. Fiona, don't say that. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. With Anna dead and all. Don't worry. Books are written to entertain, and it's good you're enjoying it. What we're faced with here is a terrible crime committed in a real world. Much different from that of a novel. So there's no need to apologize. Thank you, Agent York. We couldn't find him. Fiona needs to check her information. No, I don't think so. Does the doctor like playing games by any chance? What do you mean? There's a message on the computer and a card key already set in place. The king passes the rook and meets the bishop. The knight takes a pawn along for the queen. What does that all mean? It's a simple puzzle. Zack, let's take him up on his challenge. You can do this, right? The doctor awaits below with the deceased. Another code? But there's nowhere to insert a password. More games. I'm going to get Fiona to call Usha up here right now. No need, George. The message appeared with the card key. It's telling us where to use it. This is not the time to be joking around, Agent Morgan. Dr. Usha is below with the deceased. With Anna. Below being underground, I take it. Simple. Simple. Then it's time to meet the mischievous architect of this little game. Nah. Usha, sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, you made it. Let's get started, shall we? This is Agent Morgan, from the FBI. Hmm, nice to meet you. I'm Usher Johnson, the doctor in this hospital. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. Everyone calls me that. Very well, Agent York. Are you a forensic practitioner? Let's just say I've dealt with corpses before. That battle of wits, by the way. Did you create that yourself? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see if our FBI agent could handle the task. I see. Well, it was pretty fun. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. We don't have much time. We need those autopsy results.
next time, try challenging us without obstructing an investigation. You've angered the monarch. From the onset of rigor mortis, the stiffening of the muscles, the time of death is estimated to be between 20 and 2200 hours. Uh, that's still quite early for such a crime to take place. Note that there are two exterior wounds, pressure marks around the neck, and a long cut running from chest to abdomen. Blood marks on her right hand tell us she was gripping something round in her right hand. Her skull is also fractured, but that is unrelated to the cause of death. It probably happened to her after she was killed. Now, I first thought death by suffocation, due to the marks on her neck. But after further investigation, I now have a different conclusion. The direct cause of death was loss of blood from the wound. Which means... She was cut up while she was still alive. Yes, uh, a sharp knife was used. It was inserted beneath the sternum and then quickly sliced downwards. The excessive loss of blood from her internal organs is what actually killed her. Her nails are clean, and with no skin cells from the attacker. She also doesn't appear to have been bound, nor badly beaten. She was apparently killed without resistance. The most tragic thing, however, was that she was unable to speak her story to anyone who could hear her cries. The perpetrator cut out Anna's tongue. Well, I believe she was drugged first to phase her consciousness and then the killer killed her. Now, the killer most likely has a deep traumatized past concerning women. He probably cannot converse with them normally. Cutting out the tongue suggests a very lonely individual. Either that or a truly hardcore sadist. He must get off on watching women suffer, especially when they can't answer back. Now, he watched as the blood pumped from her body, as she gradually grew cold. Now, a case in Seattle in 1985 was much like... Usha, please, limit your report to your findings as a doctor. Criminal profiling is my job. You're wrong, also. Anna died fully, deeply, painfully aware of what was happening to her. But, uh... Tell me, what time did it stop raining on the night Anna was killed? Uh, just before I went to bed. Right after the movie on TV ended, so... Around 1 a.m.? What movie was it? An American Werewolf in London. Uh, directed by John Landis, 1981. So the rain stopped, accompanied by the ending song, Blue Moon. George, would you mind if I examined Anna myself? What more do you hope to find? I'm sure I mentioned that I have a personal interest in cases like these. From her lack of resistance, I'd say that Anna's injuries happened very quickly. Unable to speak, she was then left to cry herself to death. Zack, it's all starting to come together. The perpetrator stayed with her for at least two hours until it stopped raining. At the estimated time of her death, it was still raining. But you can still see tear marks on her cheeks. That means she was 
killed under a roof somewhere. Hmm. She was then carried into the woods after it stopped raining. Hmm. <clears throat> there, there's one other thing. Her tongue was removed with a very blunt knife. In fact, it's more likely it was simply chopped off. Asha, are you a passionate man? Well, not particularly, I mean, but I am man enough should the moment call for it. George, how about you? I'm very passionate, yes. Especially when it comes to women. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. George, the perpetrator is just like you. He's passionate about women. He's a passionate kisser. This was a kiss of death. Ah, the perpetrator bit off Anna's tongue. <laughs> we'll never get a dental print from a wound like this. But this is still a big lead. sightseeing tour just came to an end. This case is now under the jurisdiction of the FBI. I'm assuming command. I'll need you to assist me in the investigation. What in the hell do you mean, Agent Morgan? I know I said I was passionate, but you can't think I did this. That's not why I'm assuming command, George. You're a suspect just as much as every other passionate man on Earth. Let me show you something. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but most of the details are top secret. Oh. George, Emily, we should be going. No need to stay here any longer. Okay. I have to sign the release. Just give me a moment. Very well. I'll go on ahead. I can't take it any longer down here. Bishop takes Queen. His rook takes your queen, and your knight takes rook. And checkmate. Huh? Oh. Oh, my first victory in the Grandmaster ranking. Zack, they're here.
Agent Morgan, if you're so desperate, then why not smoke two at once? It... Ugh. Who's that old man? That's Harry. Harry Stewart. One of the bigger problems around here. His father started up the lumber trade and founded this town. He's a weird one, as I'm sure you can see. Always dressed like that, never speaking to the townsfolk. And just FYI, he owns almost the entire town. Not that that makes any difference. So long as I'm around, he won't be getting away with any funny business. Mr. Francis York Moore. Haste won't lead you to what you seek. Keep your eyes focused on your footing as we speak. So says Mr. Stewart. Nice to meet you too. How did you know my name? Mr. Francis York Morgan, Information desires you, just as you desire information too. So says Mr. Stewart. Harry, stop trying to get in our way. Keep this up, and even you'll have to answer to the law. Mr. Francis York Morgan, with each rain our town goes mad. To our disdain, unpreventable. So sad. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning. Then we shall depart, Mr. Francis York Morgan. That's how he always is. Always spouting that nonsense. Don't give it any thought. It's all gibberish. Emily here. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Agent York, we've contacted the first witnesses to the crime scene. You can interview them where they found the dead body. Excellent. I was just about to ask if you could take me there. The body was found in the Greenvale Forest Park. That's west from here, and too far to walk. A forest park? It's the pride of the town. It has a beautiful trail leading to a viewing site over Velvet Falls. That does sound fantastic. Show me the sights. Uh, that may have to wait. We promised to be there by 1800 to interview the first witnesses to the crime scene. Agent Morgan, if I could just give you a friendly warning. Are you really upset about me taking over the case? <clears throat> I have the authority approved by the FBI to assume command. I understand you don't like it, but you will follow my orders. I'm not disputing FBI authority, but this is our town. You won't get far alone, and you gain nothing by antagonizing me. It's part of my personality. I just do things my way. I can take you off the case if you wish. Stop it, you two. We need to solve this case, not bicker among ourselves. Mm. Fantastic cooking, Thomas. <laughs> Thank you. Good, wholesome cooking like this in the workplace every day? George, you've got the good life here. I've been cooking here every day since I started. Only natural that I'd improve. How about your cooking, Emily? <gasps> oh, her cooking is pretty good. But it isn't for two-legged animals. 
<laughs> oh, did you hear that, Zach? <laughs> Not for two-legged animals. I'll have to remember that one. <laughs> okay, okay. Finish up. We need to meet the twins over at the forest park. That's right. Agent Morgan, that's enough for today. Stop your giggling and let's get back on track. Yes, of course. <laughs> Tell us to come here, and you keep us waiting. Is this the way the FBI treats their own people? Hello, George. I just had some things I had to do. You really are pushing it, you know that? I'm sorry if I upset you, but it was important stuff. To me, at least. That isn't the issue here. We are in the middle of a homicide investigation. He's not listening, George. I think we both know by now how little he thinks of other people's feelings. I'll be more careful from now on. I promise. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. It's what everyone calls me. And you are Jim Green? That I am, son. I keep these woods. Well, you're doing a fine job. Well, I used to be a tree surgeon. And these two discovered the body? Yes, my grandchildren, Isaac and Isaiah. See that? Twins. Just like in my dream. We gotta keep an eye on these two. I'm sorry. Could we talk away from the boys? I want to help your investigation, but I don't want them to hear this. Very well. Emily, please. I'll just take them over there then. Thank you. Hold on. Don't do anything without asking me. These children were the first to witness the crime scene. I want to talk to them. Come on, they're just kids. They have no idea what really happened to Anna. That doesn't matter. You agree with me, right, Zack? How heartless. Do you ever think of other people's feelings, ever? Emily's right. That's stone cold. Even for the sake of investigation. Children see things in pure, simple terms. They may have seen something we adults would never spot. And they are here at our request as well. We could at least chat with them and see if they want to make a statement. Are you serious? I never joke about matters like this. <laughs> oh my god. Don't worry. They aren't as fragile as you think. Look at them, standing so upright there. Most useful information, boys. Well, Emily, you can take them now. Okay, Zack. This is where Anna's body was. And that means our unsub. Our unknown subject was here, too. So, what happened here? Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues. As you requested, we have permission to stay and look around as needed. But what are you planning on doing? To examine the scene, of course. Basic Crime Investigation 101. We might uncover some further evidence. My men have covered this already. I seriously doubt that there is anything else to find. Well, then you and Emily can wait in the car if that's the case. But I'll take my time here. I haven't seen one of these in a long time. It's upside down. I guess this is meant to be an anti-peace sentiment then. These holes on the ground were made by uh, high stiletto heels all around here. And this depression 
Here? Agent Morgan? I see what happened here. He hung her from the tree and put on her shoes. He was really enjoying it. Sicko. And he knelt down. And... and disgusting! George, you certainly have a vivid imagination. An interesting theory. Don't you think, Zack? And what was his name again? That Hollywood producer. That's right. Joel. We really ought to introduce George to him, Zack. Profiling is a little different from writing a screenplay, though. An idea being interesting doesn't make it fact. Let me enlighten you, George. The footprints reveal that one of the heels were missing from the shoes. And they're different from Anna's shoes that we saw at the office. Furthermore, there would be even more disgusting evidence if he did kneel and, well, do as you suggested. If you want proof, go ahead and try it for yourself. He knelt here for a reason other than simple perversion. Zack, what was he doing in front of Anna? Now I get it. He was kneeling to pray in front of her. Just like the twins said, she was a goddess. The unsung, our unknown subject, offered prayers to her as well. It's been now a ton of massive body. Once dead Anna was transformed from an object of despite into one of worship. So who is Miss Stiletto Heels? The steps are close coming up to the body and then farther apart going away. There was a reason to hurry away then. That settles it then, George. Miss Stiletto Heels is a third party here. She's not the murderer. No one runs away from an object of worship. She could be another victim who was with Anna. Or perhaps an accomplice who fled for some reason. She is also one who took... whatever it was Anna was holding on to in her hand. But why? Why did she leave her here? Only Miss Stiletto Heels knows the reason for that. She might know something about the man with the reversed peace mark, too. How many women wear high stiletto heels in this town, do you think? Oh, I should think most of them have at least one pair. I do, too, before you ask. But nobody would come all the way out here wearing them, except, well, except maybe one person. Don't keep me in the dark, then. Who might this elegant lady be? Diane, the owner of the art gallery. But she's out of town for a big art auction. I heard she'll be coming back in a couple days. Then we'll just have to give her a warm welcome home. A more immediate matter, then. Where in town can you find something like this? It should be a building that isn't used anymore. With either a lot of metal or metal machinery or something like that. The, the old, old lumber, lumber mill. Then it's time to really get this show on the road. Could you guide me to this perfect setting for extravagant murder? The lumber mill is pretty far from here. If that's where she was killed, why would the killer go to all the trouble of carrying her all the way here? I don't know yet. My profiling instincts tell me one thing is for sure, though. The unsub's personality is totally different before and after the crime. The unsub killed her in a brutal, horrifying way, and then displays powerful adoration after she's dead. Something close to love. That could well be the key to all this.
I will say this though, George. Profiling is a risky business. Of course, if the unsub planted those stiletto footprints himself, well then, everything I've just said falls apart. But there's no evidence that he left those stiletto footprints. I'm sure we have Miss Stiletto Heels to thank for those tracks. All I can do is deduce the unsub's feelings in light of the evidence, and carefully figure the unsub's M.O. Modus operandi, his way of thinking. It usually unveils something that a normal forensic analysis may overlook. That's my way of profiling. It's not for everyone, but it works for me. I'm going in alone. You two stay here. I can't concentrate on profiling with other people around me. Now hold on a minute. We're investigating this case together. Listen, I can't risk the crime scene being compromised by you two. What are you saying? You're not the only professional law enforcement officer here, Agent Morgan. We know how to secure a crime scene. I'm sorry. That was rude of me. But this is how I operate. Furthermore... Yes? Furthermore what? To me, the outsider FBI agent, every citizen of this town is a suspect. You two could be in on this whole thing for all I know. I have to keep suspects out of the crime scene. How can you say such a thing? Is he making fun of us? We should have left him behind and come here by ourselves. You're right. I've never been so insulted. I'm sorry, but I'm just doing my job. Did you hear that, Zack? If they're pros, then we should let every first-person shooter gamer out there join the SWAT team. Zack, they're here. Just as I thought, Zack. This is where Anna was killed. noise. We're still missing a vital piece of the puzzle. Zack, it's almost like an altar. Was the murder some kind of ritual?
all the information we need, Zack. Let's go back and show them what we found. Have you seen any of these things before? No, not that I know of. But that raincoat is a little odd. Odd? In a town where it rains so much? Well, the people here rarely go out in the rain. I moved here during high school and I never really understood why. Can you shed some light on this, George? No. Oh, well, there's an old story. Folklore. It's a fairy tale, to me. Something about a killer in a raincoat who appears on rainy nights. A vicious killer in a bright red raincoat. Yeah, that was it. Just a foolish piece of superstition. A rubbish story someone made up. Not many people still believe it, but I guess it's a traditional place. Most of the shops still close up when it rains. School's out, too. And since there's no reason to go out, not many people ever wear raincoats. And now the raincoat killer has leapt out from his picture book. Oh, by the way, would you two kindly show me your backs? Our backs? Is this related to the case? The person with the upside-down peace mark in that photo we found. He's our killer. And what makes you so sure about that? Zack and I saw him kill Anna in the lumber mill. He killed her. Right in there. Oh, one thing. Please don't ask me about Zack. That's a private matter. Anyway, by showing me your backs, we can clear up most of my concerns about you. Isn't that for the best? You do want to remove yourselves from the suspect list. It will make things a lot easier. This is insane. Your methods are rude, insulting, and out of the question. And Emily is a female officer. Forcing her to show you her back is harassment. I don't care if you are FBI or not. You are out of line. Mm-hmm. Hmm. George, it's okay. Let's just show him and get it over with. Emily, are you crazy? Look, we flash our backs and he'll start trusting us a little more. Right, Agent York? <sighs> Are you satisfied now? Yes, my apologies. Now you, George. Yeah, yeah, okay. I can't refuse it now, can I? But don't expect to get your way all the time, Agent Morgan. Hmm. Huh? George! What are these scars? Just like your Mr. Zack. Something private. I don't have to tell you about it. Of course. Just like Zack. We can understand that, right, Zack? Anyway, this will make things a lot easier from now on. I'm glad to say you're both pretty much off the hook. Thank you for your cooperation. If anyone is suspicious around here, it's him. He's the most suspicious. No, I don't think so. But he certainly is the most irritating. We've studied the crime scene. You know what we have to do next, Zach. George, can we arrange to have the town folk gather in one place? There are some things I want to address with the town folk. 
Very well. I'll arrange to have as many as possible gather in the community center tomorrow. Thank you, George. Welcome back, everyone. Ah, uh, Thomas. Agent Morgan, it's past 2100. Let's meet up again at the community center tomorrow. I haven't been sleeping much since this all started, to be honest. I'm exhausted. I was just about to suggest the same thing. I'll make arrangements for people to gather between 1500 and 1700. I'll try and get as many people as I can to come, so don't be late. Okay? Don't be late. I'll be there. The community center's on the south side. I've marked it on your map. Thanks, Thomas. Well then, see you tomorrow. So, what exactly do you want to talk to everyone about? This case goes deeper than you think. The town folk may have heard about the murder, but they don't understand it. It's a very dangerous situation, and I need to warn them properly. I hope most of them are decent enough to come. No problem there. Emily has made all the arrangements. I've told everyone to gather around between 1500 and 1700. Great. Reminds me of a film I saw recently. A town is under attack by aliens. And so the mayor calls all citizens to the town hall to warn them. Now, ever seeing this, the aliens attack the hall and wipe them all out together. Is that relevant, Agent York? The way they kill is fantastic. They used a combination of balloons and meat sauce for exploding heads. Those aliens start firing their death rays and heads start popping like splat. They're really quite something. Agent York, some of us are trying to eat here. I know, Emily. I'm one of them. Well, anyway, your cooking is the best, Thomas. Thank you. No, no problem. Greenvale Community Center. Now that's an impressive building. The clock tower is impressive too. Zach, I haven't been on stage like this since elementary school. I'm not some tree in the wind this time either. Well, that was a tough roll. That was a piece of scenery. Bright red tree. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming today. Getting right down to business. Agent Morgan from the Federal Bureau of Investigations wishes to speak with you. Good afternoon. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Some of you are already aware by now of the tragic murder of Anna Graham. Truly a heinous, terrible crime. I've come to this town to solve the murder of this young, beautiful girl. And to bring the one responsible to justice. Unfortunately, incidents like these have a tendency to happen again. I ask to have you gathered here so I can share some advice in order to minimize the risk of further fatal incidents. Firstly, please, stay away from any dark, dangerous, isolated places. Those of you with children, especially of Anna's age, please, guide your children away from such places at all costs. Secondly, avoid going out when it is raining. Now I've heard the folklore story of the raincoat killer. There is a chance that the murderer is mimicking the story. Women should also be especially careful. I would hate to see more victims
who's the fashionably late one. That's Carol, Thomas's sister. She owns a bar. Thomas's sister. Now, hey, excuse me. So, as I have said, avoid going outside when it is raining. Young women should be especially careful. Report anything or anyone suspicious immediately. The murderer will be caught and brought to justice. But you must all remain on guard until we do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. When paying for our sins, we must not frown. The loss of Anna was for that debt. When purple fog covers our town, we'll all wander in hell, I fret. So says Mr. Stewart. knows how to steal thunder. Well then, Zack, let's ask some questions before all these guys leave. Agent York, your words really made me think about Anna's death again. How could one do such a terrible thing? I'm still in shock. <sighs> Thomas, I forgot to ask. You don't have a tattoo on your back, do you? A uh, tattoo? Well, I do, actually. But why? Could you show it to me, please? What? Now? Here? Yes, please. This is vital for our investigation. Okay. If it's gonna help you any. <laughs> well, I'm wondering who G is now, but aside from that... Did it tell you anything? It told me that you didn't kill Anna. Of course not! What are you saying? You ought to see that tattoo, Zack. A big heart with an arrow through it and love G in the center. I don't know when he got that done, but we've all been through the 80s. Quite a performance. Mysterious and very poetic. But I don't think many of your audience appreciated it. Mr. Francis York Moore. The purple fog appears with rain. Soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out why the town is soiled. Remove the source from which it boiled. Then and only then your case is solved. But for this to happen, to solve the crime, the proper must do the proper at the proper time. It is not yet mine, that is, Mr. Stewart's time, not mine. But if you, Mr. York, find the right timing to chat with me, that is, with Mr. Stewart, may that be. Informative and fruitful, you will see. So says Mr. Stewart. So, Harry, you know something. But there's some reason why you can't tell me yet. Is that what you're trying to say? Cut the poetic rubbish, Harry, and tell us what you know. We can force you to talk, you know.
Mr. Francis York Moore. Pay close attention to the signs, the omens, and the premonitions. Small they may be, they still are finds, and helpful to your investigations. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning, Harry. But don't worry. Me and Zack, we know what we're doing. Good evening, Agent. Good evening, Mr... Brian, the gravekeeper. <clears throat> Brian. Mr. Brian, I like the retro look. Auditioning for Little Grave on the Prairie? Anna. Oh, she was so beautiful. Too soon. <clears throat> too, too soon to go to the grave. So sad, so sad. I totally agree. That's why I'm here, looking for the one who did it. Were you close to her? Mm. Anna, <laughs> her smile, so warm. Anna, blonde hair, so bright. There's a graveyard somewhere in town, Zack. I'm not excited about the idea, but maybe we should at least check it out. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. So Anna was killed, but why does that bring the FBI here? I have an interest in murder cases involving young women. Well, you know, man, this might just be another case to you, but it means the death of a friend to me. And I want you taking this lightly like it's just another case. I never take anything of this nature lightly, I assure you. I'm here to apprehend the perpetrator who did this. Yeah, because local enforcement can't shine their own boots, right? Good point. You can't always count on the police now, can you? But that doesn't mean you're going to capture the perpetrator yourself, Quint. How do you know my name? I memorized the name of every citizen before arriving in town. I also know about you and your significant other. You mean Becky? Don't underestimate the FBI. We know and see everything. I'm sorry if I was a little harsh. I want to help, I do. Okay? Okay, Zach, I'll tell you how I knew his name. He's got a small Q on his hat. That was the only name beginning with Q that I could think of. He was even kind enough to tell us his girlfriend's name. I can read him like a book, Zach. You're York, right? I'm Richard Dunn, the owner of the Darts Bar, Swery 65. How'd you like the town? Oh, it's great. Aside from the murder that happened here. Yep. Murder just doesn't fit with a small town like ours. Well, Richard, I'll have to correct you on that. Crimes don't care about size. Big town, small town, just isn't a factor. Uh, I guess you're right. So... How did you know Anna? I've known her since she was a child. She was the same age as my son. You know, she always stood out, being pretty and all. Just like her mother, Sally. What do you know about Sally? Well, I, I went all through school with her right here in town. I never thought our children would be the same age. I don't see her here today. Ah, well, see, she lost her husband, and this time it's her daughter. She's at home right now, trying to make peace with it all. You seem to know a lot. How long have you been in love with her? <laughs> hey, hey, don't go there. That scar of yours tells me you got your hands full too, right? Let's not dive into personal matters. It'll be better for you and me. You're right, Richard. Collecting gossip won't help with the matter at hand. Agent York, you make any progress? Of course. Plenty. But tell me, Usher, when is Anna's funeral? Mm, that's still undecided. Sally isn't really in any condition to do it right now. Her mother? I don't see her here. Anna was his sole reason for living, after her husband was deceased. Well, she's probably huddled up at home. And I should probably take some time to pay her a visit. Well, yes, you should. And I'd appreciate it if you could, too. Uh, 
but don't go too hard on her, okay? Are you getting closer to catching the murderer? Hello again, Fiona. Good to see you here. Well, Dr. Johnson told me to be here. He said it would be important. Well, that was good advice. He may be young, but he seems like a wise man. Oh, and he's a very hard-working person, too. Everyone thinks he's some kind of weirdo, but I don't think so at all. People don't understand why he's in the autopsy room all day, but I do. He's doing research to make the world a better place in the future. You know, he already made a fortune in L.A. with his career. I did not know that. You didn't? Oh, the doctor is a very rich man. He has a really big house over by the lake. Amazing, Zack. He must be loaded. Rich and young. A perfect combination. But you don't get that feeling from him at all, do you? He doesn't show it. That's one of the things I like best about him. Well, I could have been fooled if it weren't for you. Thanks for the valuable information, Fiona. So you're the FBI agent, are you? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I'm the General. I fought for my country in the Vietnam War. A real-life war hero. So why are you living here? Soldier, this is my hometown. After a man returns from war, there's no place to go other than his hometown. Your little speech, you mentioned the raincoat killer. Was that a problem? You imbecile. The raincoat killer's no myth, not mere folklore, not a fairy tale. It's based on actual events that happened in this town. It is. I'm interested. Can you tell me more about this? <laughs> You kids today don't even know how to ask for something right. Soldier, if you want to hear more, you come to my office. He literally exudes raw power, Zack. Despite the credibility issues, we should give him a visit. One thing, though. He calls himself a general, but isn't that a sergeant's uniform? I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I presume you are the owner of the diner that Anna worked at? That's right. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Anna Graham. Did you notice anything strange about her prior to the incident? <laughs> Nick, are you hiding something? No, nothing. You're sure? I'm sorry, but I don't like repeating myself. I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And you are? Olivia. Nick's wife? Anna worked at your husband's diner, right? What kind of girl was she? Well, she was a very hard worker. A nice girl. Did you ever see her acting strange? Well, not really. But there was one thing. Well, you see, the diner closes when it rains. Many shops do that around here, as you might have heard. Anyway, Anna always seemed unfocused the day after it rained. And came in late, too. It was almost as if she used up all her energy the day before. Come to think of it, that was really strange. Did that legendary monster really kill her? It wasn't a monster. Just a criminal. A criminal I'm going to catch and bring to justice. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. Wesley, owner of the gun store called Panda Bear. People around here call me the gunsmith.
Was there something you want to ask me? How do you make a living running a gun store in a place like this? I'd be worried because there can't be that many customers. Worry gives a small thing a big shadow. I do gunsmith work in my shop, too. If you got the skills, the customers find you. All you need is a network. I hope so. You've got quite a selection here. No wonder people come from all around. Even today, a customer paid me to go to Seattle for some help. I just got back. I see. Well, I'll be sure to visit your store sometime. I'd like for you to take a look at my gun. Understood. Look forward to it. The shop will be open again tomorrow. It's usually open from 2000 to 0600. See you then. Yeah! Hey there, FBI. I'm Keith Ingram. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. That's what everyone always calls me. Okay, York. No problem, man. So, Keith. I hear you run the Milk Barn convenience store. That's right, man. Rock and roll! Do you sell raincoats there by any chance? Yeah, but nobody ever buys them, though. Anyone who wears one of them, I say, just ain't a rocker. But you know, that scar of yours, now that scar rocks! This scar rocks? <laughs> now that's a new one. I'll drop by your store soon, and let's talk then. Yeah, cool, man! Rock on, FBI! You're Isaac and Isaiah's mother? Yes, I'm Lily. I'm FBI Special Agent... Agent York, right? You are good. <laughs> the handsome special agent from the big city. The facial scar trademark. The way you introduce yourself. Everyone's talking about you. Well, I can't say much about the scar. But the way I introduce myself... Zack and I consider it a kind of ritual of sorts. Everyone has their own rituals. It's like always leaving the house left foot first. It's one of those things. You certainly are a funny one. So, have you noticed anything strange or out of place recently? Well, Becky's been taking a couple of days off from work, but aside from that, I heard she was in shock after the murder. But... You think there's something else? Well, I took the boys along to see her today. She's always so kind to them, and they love seeing her too. But she took in the boys and told me to wait outside. Something about a special secret between just the three of them. I just couldn't understand it. Now that's interesting. Thank you, Lily. Perhaps we should give Becky a visit tomorrow, Zack. Mr. Morgan, you're quite an impressive public speaker. Really? Thank you, Polly. You reminded me a little of a play I saw when I was younger. What kind of play? I'm talking about back when this place was still called the Mercury Theater. When I was young, I used to come here often with my husband. God rest his soul. We'd come on the weekend to see the latest play. He'd always pretend to be uninterested. But I could tell he was excited inside. He was just one of those kind of guys, really, thinking about it now. Really, Polly? So what's your favorite play? Oh, well, I like so many. There was one in particular, but I can't recall the name anymore. Oh, it was a very famous one, too. Something by Shakespeare? Oh, um... No, nothing. One more bell that doesn't ring anymore. I've always been forgetful about the plays we used to see anyway. Oh, and my husband would get angry at me for forgetting what we saw. He'd go on for hours retelling what the play was about. His eyes were so sparkling, like a happy young boy. I see. So, what's your favorite play? Oh! I almost forgot, Mr. Morgan. We're going to have another guest soon. I have to get back and get things ready. Sorry for having to hurry away. I'll see you back at the hotel.
Zack, I think she could embarrass the toughest of the FBI's interrogators. She successfully avoided answering my question, Zack. Amazing. Oh my! My pot is getting cold! Hey! Mister! My pot is getting cold! You are... who? What are you saying? I'm Sigourney! Sigourney! Sigourney, okay. Now, what is the matter? Can you explain? No time for chatting! I need to hurry. My pot is getting colder. Oh, you're useless. Zack, we've met all sorts today, but really, she takes the cake. Amazing. Jim, thanks for your help in the forest. How are Isaac and Isaiah? They're fine. They really seem to love their grandpa. Well, I guess they do, son. I want to keep them away from the filth of the material world as much as I can. Their mother agrees, which is why she lets me take care of them so often. And that's why I want you to solve this case quickly and go home. Those rumors about that scar of yours do more damage than good around here. I guess I reek of the material world, don't I? I have to, in order to do my job. But I understand what you mean. I'd think the same if I was born in a place like this, Zack. I ain't got nothing to tell the cops. What about the FBI? Shut up! At least give me your name. I'm Jack. They call me Raging Bull. That's a manly nickname. If you want info, it'll cost you. I only talk to Ben Franklin. You know, first impressions are important. I can detain you for a few days, and maybe you'll become more fun to meet. <laughs> <sighs> Zack, this is a waste of time. Let's go. Hey, good looking. Nice speech. And you are? Oh, I'm Gina. I'm married to Jack. He runs the gas station. Call me the Rose. You look pretty... revealing. Oh, <laughs> this old thing? Oh. You should see some of my other clothes. You? Oh, now you are cool. That scar really is a turn-on. You should come to my station. I'll give you a little extra service. That would be great. I can't believe how expensive gasoline is nowadays. Some extra service would be great. Now, about my current case. Do you have any information on Anna? Have you seen anything suspicious? Oh, I don't know. Talk to my hubby about the difficult stuff, okay? This is getting us nowhere, Zack. Anna was an airhead. What do you mean? Are you saying she was killed because she was an airhead? Or are you saying that she was an airhead for being killed? I'm sure she's still an airhead, even in heaven. She changed her hair every day. If she lost a pound, she'd be ecstatic, gain one, and she'd almost be in tears. She broke many, many plates every day at the diner, and she'd always have a smile on her face, always having fun. Everyone looked at her and knew she was a cute, adorable, loving airhead. But they would be smiling right along with her. I wouldn't be surprised if the angels smiled with her too. <laughs> Isaac and Isaiah said that Anna was a fairy of the forest. A goddess.
Agent Morgan, I'd like to let everyone go home now. Let's go outside. Well then, Agent York, do you have any plans for this evening? I was going to head back to the hotel and go over my notes. I need to contact HQ and give a progress report, too. Okay, and let's call it a day here. Sounds good. Contact my office when you finish your report. We'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Diane, the owner of the art gallery, should be back soon. All right, then, let's do that. Hold on, Agent York. We're going out to eat at Nick's Diner. Would you like to come with us? The diner? That might be nice. Thomas is a great cook, but Nick is the real deal. No visit to Greenvale is complete without eating at the A&G. A very appealing proposition. Zach, what do you think? We can always go back to the hotel after eating dinner. Or go directly back to the hotel. You decide, Zach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been sheriff here for a long time now, and this is the worst murder I've ever seen. Our town is a little odd in some ways, but it's usually a peaceful place. We had our fair share of cases, but just the regular stuff. A high school kid shoplifting from the milk barn, maybe? Or some hot-headed kids fighting, fueled on liquor? Nothing more than that. Agent York, what kind of cases have you dealt with in the past? Not much different from those you've just mentioned. The case I was on until last month, well, the guy killed seven girls in a three-month period. He sawed their heads off from the neck and took them back to his house. He cleaned the skulls up and used them as utensils in his daily life, to eat from or as a urine cup. He hated women. That was his way of dealing with it. He'd fill skulls with ice, cola, and rum. Then he'd down it in one gulp. For him, that was a holy ritual. The question of his mental state was the pivotal point in the court case. Oh, man. For me, he was insane. A hundred percent. Drinking from the skulls, well, that is one thing, but... but those he had used to relieve himself, he would then just use them to drink from, too. Yeah, that was too much for me. It's just not sanitary. <clears throat> <clears throat> not sanitary. Uh, that's probably not the problem for most of us. What else? Ah, yes. An ingenious law school student raped over 800 victims. That was a nasty one. Thank you, Agent York. Now, let's talk about something else. You don't want to hear anymore? That's a shame, isn't it, Zack? I was just about to get to the good part, too. Sounds like you live in a totally different world. I mean, you're like an elite agent who just jumped out from a movie or something. In your eyes, we must look like we're just playing cops and robbers. Ugh, I give up. I can't compete with you. Don't say that, Emily. The cases you have solved are all full-fledged crimes. A crime is a crime. Size doesn't matter. There is no big and small. Crimes always have a, a criminal and a victim. No victim will ever welcome a crime no matter what its size. So, fundamentally, there is no difference in size. 
Well said, Agent Morgan. We work day and night to preserve peace and order in this town. You understand that, right? Of course. But still, I don't view shoplifting and Anna's murder as the same level of crime. Me neither. I never even dreamt that such a thing could ever even happen in this town. I keep on expecting to see Anna here in this diner waiting on tables. <laughs> Excuse us, Agent Morgan. We should have made dinner a more uplifting experience. Let's call it a night. Okay. Good night, then. Okay then, Zack. Let's go back over our progress. First the victim, Anna's death. She was found hanging from a tree in the forest. She was cut open with a knife from her chest down to her stomach. That was the direct cause of death. The strangulation marks and skull fracture were caused after death. Her tongue was also bit off and found something inside her mouth. Do you remember what that was, Zack? That's right. We found the same red seed in her mouth. According to Emily, it was raining when Anna was killed, but traces of tears were still evident on her face. Which means the perpetrator killed Anna under a roof in the lumber mill, and then carried her body into the woods after it stopped raining. We found numerous important pieces of evidence at the site of the crime, a total of four things. Knee prints in the grass, a wood chip with metal dust, a photo of a man with a tattoo on his back, and one other thing. Do you remember what that was, Zach? stiletto heel. Aligning this with the other evidence suggests that two people came into contact with Anna's body prior to it being discovered by us. Those being the perpetrator who killed Anna and Miss Stiletto Heel. There is also the possibility that a third party carried Anna to the woods. That means we could be dealing with three people. Two or three people. In any case, Miss Stiletto Heel may have vital information. We need to find her next. We didn't use forensic methods, but we're still closing in on the criminal. <sighs> have I forgotten anything? Ah, of course. The marks on her hand tell us that Anna was gripping something when she died. Do you remember that, Zack? What do you think she was holding on to? That's right. A round object. The marks on her hand suggest a peace mark. The man in the photo found in the woods had a tattoo of an upside down peace mark on his back. These two could well be related. But we don't know for sure. Next, the town folk. A few are worthy of special attention. Carol McLean, the singer and bar owner. She's Thomas's sister. Then there's Nick Cormack, the owner of the diner. Both of them seem to be hiding something. There's Diane, the owner of the art gallery, who's out of town. Then we have problematic, old, rich, and eccentric Harry. 
Both will be tough to crack. Well, we just have to go one by one. I've been thinking. One of the biggest rewards here is the fantastic food. Enjoying food is cultural, and yet it's also a bit uncivilized. It's interesting how good food motivates me to work harder during investigations. Oh, and on Emily's back, it was strange to me. Hey, don't take that the wrong way, Zack. I wasn't getting all excited or anything. But it did make me feel strange. Nostalgic and sad, almost. It's starting to rain. I think this case may take a while. You'll eat right now, young lady. You need to listen to your mother. I want to hear the rest of the story. Eat your lunch. Then take a nap. Then I'll tell you the rest. But I want to hear it now. There's no need to rush things. You must live your life at the pace that is right for you. 